remember the majority of it. I mean, it really was just a normal patrol. There was no thoughts about anything. Our headquarters had just said, hey, go check this area out. I mean, you're just making jokes with each other, always paying attention. One way or another, I was not going to die right in that spot. For Sergeant John Priestel, the road from Iraq to Minnesota has not been easy. The Minnesota Guardsman survived a roadside bombing that killed two close friends last December, and he also lost both of his legs in that blast. You would think it would be hard to keep a positive attitude after such a life-changing event. But as you're about to see, to Sergeant Creasel, life is good. For the next hour, CARE 11 reporter Joe Fryer and photojournalist John Drilling will take us through the ups and downs of Creasel's inspiring journey home to Minnesota. The nation's capital is a long way away from Sergeant Creasel's home in Cottage Grove, Minnesota. It's even farther from his job in Iraq. Yet Sergeant Creasel is here at Walter Reed Army Medical Center. One of nearly 500 amputee soldiers who called this place home since the beginning of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Both hands on the bar and up. It is here the battle after the war is waged and a new normal is forged. It's almost like starting over as a new person, so to speak, because I'm the same me. In a way, Creasel's journey started long before he was a sergeant or even a specialist. Uh, let me ask you whether you're seeing any air activity over the uh, city at this hour. Tom, here it goes. Here it goes now. The sky just full of tracer, full of tracer now. It started January 1991 with John, only nine years old, watching live coverage of the first bomb. Just seeing the bullets whiz by, seeing the the troops running around, doing their movements. From a kid's point of view, going, I could get paid to do that for a living, to play war, how fun would that be, you know? That childhood dream never faded. In fact, eight years later, John spent the night of his 17th birthday at a hotel so he could enlist in the Minnesota National Guard the very next day. I could not wait. In 2004, his first mission took him to Kosovo, which was relatively calm compared with what was happening at the same time in Iraq. I mean, we're in, in, in our chow hall eating, and there's the two big screen TVs, and it's non-stop stuff that we want to be doing. The kicking indoors, and all that stuff is fun. That's what, that's what you join the Army to do. As a little boy, the stuff you dream of. So after consulting his wife, Katie, John decided to re-enlist. From the beginning of this thing, I believed in it. And I, I've kind of been on a soapbox about the whole thing, and I figure, you know what? I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. You have transformed from just another group of soldiers into the Army's most formidable force. In March 2006, Sergeant Creasel got his wish. After months of training at Camp Shelby, Mississippi, 2,600 Minnesota troops left for Iraq. It was the largest deployment of Minnesota National Guard soldiers since World War II. Sergeant Creasel was excited as he flew into Iraq, but after just one night, he quickly learned this was no Kosovo. And I just sat there and I must have got probably a half hour sleep. Because every time I'd start to doze off, boom. Unlike most of the Minnesota troops, Sergeant Creasel's company saw more of a combat role because they were attached to a Marine Corps unit at Camp Fallujah. We stayed in these big white tents. One of which, which was kitty corner to us, was empty and the whole roof had caved in from a mortar that had went in there and exploded. And so we were like, this is for real. Before long, though, Creasel and his buddies settled into a routine, and they thought the mission on December 2nd would be no different.
I remember the majority of it. This photo was taken right before the soldiers were called to check on suspicious activity. I mean, it really was just a normal patrol. There was no thoughts about anything. There was one of these houses where they found a bunch of IEDs. Creasel, the vehicle commander, took video while riding shotgun. I mean, you're just making jokes with each other, always paying attention. About an hour after turning off the camera. It was like out of nowhere. The left tire on their brand new fully armored Humvee triggered a 200 pound explosive. I just remember when I was laying there looking at just a tangled wreck that had no even resemblance of a Humvee. He quickly realized the blast that tore through the Humvee did the same to both of his legs. I saw that and that's when I thought, this is it, you know, I'm done. But he was calm. You know, I yelled to him. I said, I need tourniquets and they were just on it. The rest, he tried to block out. I knew there were people worse off. I knew it. And so I just closed my eyes then and just started to pray for that helicopter to hurry up and get there. Moments after the chopper arrived, everything went black. Creasel opened his eyes eight days later at Walter Reed. When I woke up and saw that I was in the hospital, I looked down and I thought, yep, that's true, it did happen. Katie was right by his side. And I asked her, that's when I said, did everybody make it out okay? And uh, she had that look on her face and I thought, and it was two, two, of my, two of my best friends. The blast killed two Minnesota soldiers, Specialist Brian McDonough seen on the left, and Specialist Corey Risted, the guy Sergeant Creasel is wrapping his arm around, just two hours before the explosion. And that is the worst part. I, I really couldn't care about my legs. These prosthetics I have nowadays, I'm going to be fine, but there's no replacing those two guys. Seems broken hearts are often the hardest no. to rehabilitate. No. It's, it's difficult to just not be overjoyed that he's still here, but know that those other families just grieve so much. That's difficult. Immediately after the blast, Katie flew to the military hospital in Germany no to see her husband and has well, not left his side since. You know, she gets up to go leave and I feel empty. In fact, Katie sleeps in that chair every I'm night, so a permanent resident of room 5735. If I need something in the middle of the night, <laughs> I, just, I give her a little tap. She's a sound sleeper now. You're like, Katie, <laughs> Katie. And she looks so peaceful, I don't want to do it. So I'm like, <laughs> as gentle as I can. You could say Katie is like an assistant to the nurse, like an extension of John himself. A lot of wives would have bounced already. They would have been like, I've had enough of you, legless, you know? Ready? Another burst. This is where all the rehab goes on. Creasel would like to start working with new legs, but can't yet. The residual limbs are healing quite nicely, but unfortunately, Sergeant Creasel had other injuries. As this three-dimensional mold shows, his pelvis is shattered, an injury so severe Creasel is confined to his bed and can't bear weight for three months. I took shrapnel when my vest flew open. He's also battling infections, and surgeries are so frequent he has lost count but figures the total is somewhere in the mid-20s. I got, they did exploratory surgery here. His body aches while his mind grieves, and just as things start to improve, Creasel stumbles upon this headline as he's surfing the web. I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I just sat there in disbelief. The article reveals that a roadside bomb killed Sergeant James Wasica, a close friend and member of Creasel's company. The timing couldn't have been worse. And I, I can't imagine for the guys that are still there to, ha to have one set of funerals and then bam, another one. Three friends lost and two legs gone, Thanks, but through what it all, happened. Sergeant Creasel nice has no regrets. We all knew what could happen. We volunteered and I support the cause. I have no regrets. The only regrets I have are that two, two of my buddies that in my vehicle died. Coming up on Standing Tall, a soldier's story. Sergeant Creasel prepares to take his first steps in Washington. Three little penguins skating all around. While friends and family take care of his kids back in Minnesota. Skip in, raise some money for Sergeant Creasel. And work to raise money for a new home. 